The Japanese team will conduct a mock trial. Now I would like to introduce our speakers. The role of presiding judge is played by Shoji Tamotsu, presiding judge, Intellectual Property High, High Court. Associate judges, Nakamura Kyo, judge, Intellectual Property High Court. Katsumata Kumiko, judge, Intellectual Property High Court. Plaintiff's attorney is played by Onodera Yoshifumi, partner, attorney at law, Mori Hamada and Matsumoto. Defendant's attorney is played by Shiroyama Yasufumi, partner, attorney at law, Anderson, Mori and Tomotsune. Judicial Research Official Mitsumoto Minako, Judicial Research Official, Intellectual Property High Court. Technical Advisor is played by Akita Masayuki, Judicial Research Council, Intellectual Property High Court. And Amano Takako, Judicial Research Official, Intellectual Property High Court. And narrator is Asai Ken, Judge Intellectual Property High Court. Please begin. In ordinary patent infringement lawsuits, the statement of the complaint and the written answer and the basic documentary evidence are presented at the first date for all argument. Next, proceedings for argue, arranging issues and evidence are conducted in preparatory proceedings using web conference and preparatory proceedings in writing. After that, the proceedings will go back to the date for oral argument and will be conducted up to the rendering of judgment. In today's mock trial, you will see the second date for oral argument when the explanatory session is to be held, and the third date for oral argument when the judgment is to be rendered. The second date for oral argument will be held on September 16th and will be a bit attended by the judges and the parties, as well as by the technical advisors and the judicial research officials. On this day, the allegations and evidence will be arranged, and an explanatory session will be held to explain technical matters related to the points at issue. A technical advisor is a part-time court official, such a university professor or researcher from a public institution who is assigned to each case. They are responsible for giving explanation to the court on specialized and technical matters related to the point at issue. On the other hand, a judicial research official is a full-time court official who conducts research on necessary technical matters by order of the court. In this case, two technical advisors and one judicial research office official are involved in the to trial together with the judge. In this case, the proceedings for arranging issues have been conducted so far by means of web conferencing, a system that allows both parties to send and receive video and audio music images without having to appear in court. Accordingly, on the date for oral argument, the arguments they have in range there are stated in front of the panel. This enables the court and the parties to confirm the outcome of the proceedings, to arrange issues and the facts to be proven, as well as to examine evidence related to the facts to be proven. In the mock trial, you will see an explanatory of the summary of the allegations of the parties and the explanation of the technical matters related to the case by the technical which will be made based on the outcome of the proceedings to arrange issues and evidence. We will now begin the explanatory session. The points at issue in this case are as stated in the summary statements of both parties. Point at issue one is whether the data management device of the system falls under the measurement terminal constituting the frame measurement unit of the present in invention. Point at issue Two is whether defendant infringes the 
patent right in the system involving multiple actors. Based on these points at issue, we will first ask both parties to explain the summary of the allegations. Then first, I would like to ask for explanation from the attorney for the plaintiff. I am Onodera, attorney for the plaintiff, and I will now explain the summary of the allegations of the plaintiff. First of all, with regard to point at issue one, I will show you the description of the scope of the claim and dispute. As you see, elements B2 and element C3 are specified as follows. Element B, the frame measurement unit, comprises a measurement terminal configured to transmit the data of the limb circumference length to the lens edging unit. And element C3, lens edging unit, receives said limb circumferential length from the measurement terminal of the frame measurement unit. In other words, in this invention, the measurement terminal included in element B, the frame measurement unit, needs to measure a rim circumferential length and transmit the value to element C, the length edging unit. Next, description in the specification will be explained. According to the specification, there has been a problem in which when the lens processing factory doesn't have the spectacle frame itself at the lens processing factory, it is unable to confirm that the process lens will be accommodated in the frame, and thus the spectacle lens doesn't fit the spectral frame. As a means to solve this problem, this invention focused on the fact that the lens can be accommodated to the frame thanks to the flexibility of the frame. If the dis difference between the limb circumference lengths along the groove of the frame and the lens circumference lengths along the vivid top of the lens is within a predetermined time range, by determining whether the lens will fit the frame using decision criteria, the gap between the limb circumference lengths and the leg lens circumferential lengths. This invention provides a spectacle lens edging system that allows lens to be fitted to a frame with a high degree of certainty and efficiency. As you can see in this slide, the invention is divided into the frame measurement unit and the lens edging unit, whereas the system is divided into three units, an optical optician shop, data center, and the lens processing factory. However, when viewed from the fu functional aspect also in this system, the data management device in the data center measures the limb circumference lengths via the frame tracer and transmits it it to the lens edging unit, so the system can be evaluated to be similar to the invention. The shop PC just reads the data and doesn't perform any substantial function in relationship to the scope of claims. Therefore, the data management device can be evaluated as the measurement terminal of the frame measurement unit. Since in cooperation with the shop PC, the data management device calculates the limb circumferential lengths based on the data obtained through the measurement by the frame tracer and transmits the data to the factory PC constitutes the lens edging unit. Therefore, the system should be interpreted as satisfying elements B2 and C3. Next, I would like to state the plaintiff's position with respect to point at issue 2. First of all, we believe that joint relevance is necessary. In order to hold multiple actors liable for the whole act, even though each of the multiple action actors has only committed part of the act, the plaintiff's primary claims that only objective relevance is sufficient. Even in the case where we take the position that subjective joint relevance is necessary, if there is a continuous business relationship between the parties, they are mutually aware of the content of their acts, and therefore subjective joint relevance should be recognized. Even in the absence of such joint relevance, if one party uses another party as a pawn or tool, the act of the other party is deemed to be the act of the party who utilizes the other person. In this case, the defendant entrusted Turtle to develop the system and operate the data management device 
and the opposition's shops have entered into transaction agreements with the defendant, having been provided with the software and making the shop pieces into devices of the system. Therefore, the defendant, Tato, and opticians shops are in an objectively joint manner using the system as a whole. Even if we take the position that subjective joint relevance is also necessary, there is a business relationship between the defendant and the charter based on continued entrustment, and there is also a continued business relationship between the defendant and the optician shops, and each is aware of the other's roles in the system. Therefore, it can be said that there is a subjective joint relevance among them. Furthermore, the defendant entrusted Toto to develop the system and allow the optician's shops to use it, whereas Toto only makes the data management device respond automatically and the optician's shops only order spectacle lenses within the scope of their operation using the software. In this regard, the defendant can be evaluated as using Toto and the optician shop as a pawn or tool. Therefore, in any case, the defendant can be evaluated as using the entire system on its own. We consequently believe that the defendant is an entity using the system that satisfies all of the elements of this invention and is influencing this pattern. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Would you like to have some you know, argument from the tone in for the defendant? Okay. I am Mr. Shiroyama Tony for the defendant donkey, and I will explain the gist of the defendant argument. First, please see the slide. Here are the claims of the patent. As you can see, easily see, the system of this invention requires both a frame measurement unit and a lens edging unit. That are the requirement, and the two units are installed at geographically distant locations and are connected only via a common internet connections. However, even though or because of the remote location of the two units, the invention can only be said to be used if both of the two units are controlled and operated. And the defendant has done no such act. I will anyway explain about this point later. And please see the next slide. The figure on the left illustrates the features of this invention based on figure one of the patents. The calculation of the remote circumference length and the transmission of the rim circumference length data to the lens edging units are done by the frame measurement unit installed in each optician shop, which is based on the technical concept of calculating the rim circumference length for each unit. The figure on the right, on the other hand, illustrates the features of this system based on figure one of the patent. In this system, the rim circumference length is calculated only as one data management device. In other words, the system is based on the technical concept of having optician shops only measure the frame shape. The plaintiff seems to argue that the data management device falls under the measurement terminal constituting the frame measurement unit. However, the argument that the data management device and the shop PC located far from each other constitute the measurement terminal as if they were one. Furthermore, the claim that the flame tracer is also part of the frame measurement unit is a clear departure from the usual meaning of the word terminal or unit. There is no description in the specification or drawings to support such an interpretation. It is also a technical point, but the only data management device also serves as a measurement terminal for all option shops. Therefore, this system is different from the invention. And next, please look at this slide. 
What is shown here is that each optician shop manages and operates the store pieces and the frame tracers. The data management device is managed and operated by Tato and Donkey manages and operates only the factory pieces, Eja and lens shape Major Ra. There is no evidence that Donkey uses the entire system. In this regard, the plaintiffs argue as if Donkey is using the system jointly with Tato and each optician shop or that Donkey is using the system using Tato and each optician shops as its pawn or tools. However, both of these claims miss a point. First, in order to say that it is a joint act, it is essential that all parties share the subjective intention to act jointly. However, each optician shop does not even know Tartle exist. The only reason the opticians shop send the order information is because of their own retail eyeglass business. In addition, Donkey pays Tartle an outsourcing fee because Tartle is the one who manages and operates the data management device. Each of the three parties is merely performing its own duties and has no intention of jointly performing any act. It is also unreasonable to describe the situation as pawn and tools. If donkey is a brain and the turtle is a pawns or tools, then donkey should be able to manage and operate its own data management device. However, donkey is unable to do so because the system was designed and developed by Tartle. And Donkey is in a position where it has no choice but to wait for orders from its customers, the optician's shop. Therefore, there is no basis for the plaintiff's claim that Donkey is using this system and practicing this invention. As stated, Donkey has not committed any act of infringement of the patent. Thank you very much. Now, next, taking into consideration the argument made by the parties regarding the technical matters and the questions asked by the parties in advance, I'd like to ask a technical advisor to explain about technical issue one. Please begin with this question, Judge Katsumata. Yes, now... I'm Katsumata, and I'd like to ask a question. However, regarding the matter to ask technical advisors, let me first ask a question to the plaintiff's attorney for confirmation. Uh, this invention is structured in such a way that the various devices comprising the lens edging system belonging to either the frame measurement unit or the lens edging unit. What is the... Uh, reason for subtracting the invention in such a way that the various devices belong to one of the units rather than simply having the various devices in parallel. Uh, thank you very much. Well, actually, in the invention of a system, it is very important to specify what functions will be possessed, processed, and in what steps. On the other hand, it is not so important to specify the types of device physically captured or where exactly the device physically captured will be installed. Therefore, the functional uh, concept of a unit is used in this invention to make it clear that its functionally closely related devices realize the relevant functions in coordination with each other they are treated as a single unit, regardless, regardless of where they are installed. So, we do not think it is appropriate to understand unit as referring to some specific location. Understood? Thank you. Now, based on this, I will ask a question to Mr. Akita, the technical advisor. According to the example described in the specification, 
the data management device in this system is a device that makes determination,、uh, determination of whether processing is possible by comp- comparing all that data with the data on spectacle lens inventory stored in advantage by the aging management server, which belongs to the lens the aging unit. At the same time, It also performs the rim circumference of rings calculation, which is done by the measurement terminal belonging to the frame measurement unit of the invention. What is the technical background behind this configuration? Well, when the frame tracer measures the coordinates of the three dimensional shape of a frame rim, No matter how many measurement points are taken, the shape obtained by the connecting the coordinate value is polygonal. On the other hand, frames are usually smooth in shape. Therefore, to calculate the circumferential length, a hypothetical curve that conforms to the frame shape is assumed based on these coordinate values, and the circumferential length is calculated from that curve. The calculation of the rim circumference may be performed at the terminal of each optician shop, and even in this case, the calculation process is the same. Therefore, if the same calculation process is centralized, there is no need to make the optician shop terminals more sophisticated. Which has the advantage that o p p o s i t i o n shop can keep the cost of installing the system low. In the end, the system design will be based on the overall balance, so whether the rim circumferential length calculation is done at the o p p o s i t i o n shop or at the data center will depend on the performance of the specific design, device to be installed and the cost of installing the system. Okay, I see. Next, one more question. The defendant argues that in determining the lens edging unit, the determination of whether processing is possible should be emphasized. What is the position of the determination of whether processing is possible in the spectacle lens edging system, such as the invention of the system? Please explain this point as well, Mr. Akita. Well, okay. In both the case of this invention and the system in question, a determination of the whether processing is possible is mainly based on the availability of inventory. So, unlike peer runcies, the amount of data po- processing is negligible, and inventory verification is merely a customary method used in any system. So, this is an issue of the time and the effort required to update the database and is not something that characterizes the configuration of the system. Thank you very much. That is all. Then, next, I do like to ask. I ask a question to t e k e n by Mr. Amano. The technical significance of focusing on the circumferential length rather than the shape in determining whether the lens fits the rim or not is not clearly stated in the specification. In light of the technical common sense, what is the technical significance of focusing on the circumferential length? The invention is based on the premise that the edge and normally processes the lens is. Accurately, according to the rim shape data transmitted with the rim, so come for length data. Then attempts to solve the problem of what is the best way to determine if the lens fits the rim. The reason why the invention focuses on the circumferential length rather than the shape does, seems to be first that the rim circumference along the rim groove does not change even if the spectacle frame is deformed. As long as the difference between the rim length and lens length is within a specified range, The rim is more flexible and the lens will fit properly, even if there are parts of the rim and lens that do not conform to the shape to some extent. Also, while the overall shape of the rim and lens is expressed in three dimensional coordinates, the rim circumferential length and lens circumferential length are one dimensional lengths, so the amount of data handled can be reduced. And 
It is also technically significant that it is extremely easy to determine whether the difference between rim circumference and lens circumference is within a specified range. Thank you, I see. Do you have any questions? Yes, um, I have a question for the defendant's attorney. With regard to frame tracers installed at optician shops, I believe that different models have different measurement errors, which affect the calculation of circumfer circumferential length. In this system, one data measurement device calculates the circumferential length from the shape data of various frame tracers. Will the circumfer circumferential length calculated by the data measurement device in this configuration cause any problems in determining whether or not a lens fits the rim? The judicial research official's guess is certainly correct in that regard. The system cannot take into account the quirks and errors caused by the differences in the models of frame tracers at each optician's shop. Therefore, this system may not be as accurate as the invention, which even calculates the circumferential length at each optician's shop. However, this system does not seek that level of accuracy. However, this system instead selects the merits of centralising the calculation of circumferential length in a data management device. I see. Thank you very much. Since there seem to be no other questions, this concludes today's explanatory session. Is it OK to understand that both the plaintiff and defendant have all submitted the proofs of their claims? There is no other proof of claim by the plaintiff. The same goes for the defendant. We will now conclude the arguments. The court will render a judgment based on the contents of the explanatory session and the arguments and proofs of both parties up to today. The date for delivery of the judgment is designated as October 27th at 2 o'clock. In concluding the proceedings, the court would like to recommend settlement. Is there any possibility of setting this case through negotiations? The plaintiff has no objection to setting a settlement date. The same goes for the defendant. Then, the settlement date is set for September the 27th at 2 o'clock. The court has disclosed the impressions it has gained based on the results of the proceedings until that time. Then, on the date for settlement, it carried out consultations toward a negotiated settlement based on these impressions. The plaintiff indicated that it wished to follow the impression given by the court. However, the defendant stated its belief that a settlement would be difficult based on the assumed assumption of the court as it wanted to wait for a higher court's ruling. Therefore, judging that it would be difficult to proceed with the consultations for settlement, the court decided to terminate the settlement procedure. This is the date for rendering of judgment. The judgment is rendered orally based on a written judgment. Here, in consideration of this case, the court will read out the reasons and a summary in addition to the main text of the judgment. Now, I will render judgment. This is the main text. 1. The defendant shall not use the system. 2. The defendant shall bear the court costs. I will now present a summary of the reason for this judgment. Whether or not the system satisfies elements B2 and C3 is determined by whether or not the data measurement device of the system corresponds to the measurement terminal constituting the frame measurement unit of the invention. The scope of claims defines that this terminal calculates the rim circumfer circumferential length based on the rim shape data obtained by the frame tracer and transmits data of the rim circumferential length to the ends lensing unit with no further limitations. Therefore, a device that calculates the rim length based on the rim shape data and transmitted to the lens engine unit can be regarded as a measurement terminal. Next, in the specification, there is a statement that the invention is based on the premise that data is received and transmitted between parties at a remote distance. With the structure of this invention, it describes this effect as allowing lenses to be fixed to a frame with a high degree of certainty and efficiency. 
In view of the descriptions and the claims and the specification based on the premise that the data is received and transmitted between parties at a remote distance, whether or not the measurement terminal is the frame measurement unit is not limited as to the physical location of the device or the manner of connection of said device. In the system, the shop PC at the optician's shop just relays the rim-shaped data measured by the frame tracer to the data measurement device. Therefore, it is not involved in any way in the calculation of a rim circumfer circumferential length. However, the data management device calculates the rim length using the rim shape data transmitted to calculate the rim circumferential length. This data management device transmits the rim circumferential length data to the factory PC that constitutes the lens edging unit via a network. If this is the case, the data management device should be regarded as a measurement terminal constituting the frame measurement unit of the present invention. Additionally, in the system, the data measurement device that corresponds to the measurement terminal of the frame measurement unit calculates the rim circumferential length and the factory PC that corresponds to the lens engine unit receives the rim length data from the data measurement device that corresponds to the frame measurement unit via a network. From the above, the system is found to satisfy all the aforementioned claims. Next, I want to move where the defendant infringes the patent right in the system involving multiple actors. A system is an invention of a product, and in order for a product to fall within the technical scope of the invention, the product must satisfy all of the elements of the invention. Infringement of a patent on an invention of a product occurs when something that satisfies all of the elements is used or assigned. If this is the case, infringement of a patent right for an invention of a product is usually committed by a single actor that uses or assigns a product that satisfies all of the said elements. If the use or assignment of a product that satisfies all of these said elements cannot be formed without combining the acts of multiple actors that use or assign a product that does not satisfy the elements, patient infringement will not, in principle, be established. However, even in cases where the use or assignment of a product that satisfies all of the elements occurs for the first time through the combined acts of multiple actors, if the acts of these multiple actors can be regarded as inter interrelated and integrated, and if one of the multiple actors is aware of acts corresponding to the said elements and makes use of the acts of the others to achieve it, one of those multiple actors can be regarded as an entity who jointly infringes the said patent with other actors. In this case, the system was developed by a turtle pursuant to a contract with Donkey, and Donkey also knows much about the system. Under this contract, Donkey makes Turtle operate the data management device of the system, and under the transaction agreements with the optician shops, Donkey provides the optician shops with the software and makes them install it in the shop PCs, thereby allowing them to use the measurement terminals and frame tracers that constitute the frame measurement unit of the invention. Donkey operates the system that supplies processed lenses using the factory PC, the edger, and the lens shape measurer that correspond to the edger terminal edger and lens shape measure respectively that constitute the lens edging unit of the invention. Therefore, the acts of donkey, turtle and the optician shops are regarded as all acting jointly as a single actor. In their relationship, donkey is aware of the system as a whole and uses the acts of turtle and the optician shops to achieve the system while each of Turtle and the optician shops uses the acts of Donkey. Based on these points, Donkey is found to infringe the patent right jointly with Turtle and the optician shops. Related to these points, the defendant asserts that it is necessary that all of the actors involved in acting jointly share the same subjective invention. However, in pursuing Donkey's liability, the acts performed by the optician shops Turtle and Donkey can be regarded as interrelated and integrated. Therefore, it should be construed that it is sufficient that Donkey has an intention just to make use of the other actors. Therefore, it is not necessary that all of the actors involved in acting jointly have a mutual further intention to act jointly with all of them individually. Based on these reasons, the court rendered a judgment stated in the main text. This ends the mock trial. Thank you for listening. 
This concludes the no tutorial. Thank you very much for your performance. And uh, that's all for the mock trial. Thank you very much for your efforts.